Camera is rolling. Archie, take one. It's going to be the only take. Go for it. Hey guys, welcome back to Slow Travel Chronicles. My name is Stephanie. I'm Garrett. And in this video, we're going to talk about our trip to Arches National Park. And I liked it. Yeah, it was good. I think it's <laughs> overrated. Um, I liked it, but not as much as I thought I would. Um, I could have, we spent, what, two days there? Mm -hmm. And one day we had to go in the afternoon because it was blocked off. Yeah. We or, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Closed. Closed. <laughs> okay, it was closed because there were too many visitors. Anyway, uh, a timed reservation is required to get into Arches during the busy season. We went the week after that concluded, so we didn't have to have a timed reservation. But Arches is not a large park. It's basically one road in and out with some parking lots. And when the park gets full and there's no more parking lots available, they close it. And they put up a sign out front that says, park closed or park full, come back in three to five hours, and they shut the gates. And you're not going in. So, you know, our first day we arrived there about 10 in the morning and were turned away. So we went to Canyonlands. And we've done a separate video about Canyonlands. So check that out. Exactly. Uh, while we were driving to Canyonlands, we decided that what we would do is we would get a hotel in Moab because we were staying in Monticello, which is about an hour's drive away. And what we do is we would come back, we would arrive at Arches early afternoon, say around 1 o'clock, explore the park in the afternoon, spend the night in Moab, and the next morning get to the park before 8 to ensure we got in. And that's what we did, and it and really worked, worked out it. great. Yeah, and we stayed at Red Canyon Lodge, I think, was yeah. the name of it. It was okay. Nothing it wasn't, fancy. It wasn't fancy. We did points. Yeah. so. Yeah. But we could tell from looking at the park website that at least in mid-October, you can count on it closing around 9.30 in the morning, and it probably opens up again around 12.30 or 1 when all the early morning people leave. And then it's open the rest of the afternoon. So when we got there our first afternoon, we, we got there, and... It was mid, you know, about one o'clock. We knew the park had been full earlier, earlier in the day. We weren't sure what to expect. We drove straight out to Delicate Arch, and that's a three mile round trip hike in the sun. It's no shade, or not much shade. Pretty hot, but it was really great. And it's, it's steep. The middle third of the trail, yeah, it's kind of steep. All the elevation is contained in about a half mile section right in the middle of the trail when you're basically walking up a massive rock, but it's cool. So we did Delicate Arch, loved it, and you know, when we got to the parking lot at about two o'clock for Delicate Arch, shoot, it was maybe one third of the way full. When we got back to the parking lot, all the people who were coming for the evening and the sunset, sunset. were there. The parking lot was over full, it was packed, people were looking for spots. It was a mess. So mm -hmm. our timing to go middle of the afternoon you know, it worked out great for us because we avoided the crowds and we are all about avoiding crowds. Yes, and I would say we did not take our hiking sticks. I would probably, in hindsight, actually take them. I think I could have moved it a tad bit faster up some of the rock. Um, one of the things that we did see is um, a family taking somebody in a wheelchair, which was like a it was four a wheel wheelchair. drive wheelchair. It was like a thing three-wheel off-road contraption where you could, you know, put a disabled individual in it and basically they had one person pulling it and one person pushing it and we're talking about probably a rock that varies between 20 and 25 degrees in elevation. It wasn't like it was a minor hill. I mean, it was a pretty steep uphill. I don't know if Kudos they Kudos to them. Not. Kudos to them yeah. for trying it. At the very least, they got up to the top of the hill. There were some great views. Yeah. But, um, I absolutely love Delicate Arch. It was one of my favorite hikes in the entire trip uh, for our several weeks in Utah. And uh, afterwards, you know, like I said, we just popped back into Moab, had a nice dinner at the Spoke at Center, I think it was yeah. called, and we were ready for the next morning. Yeah. Um, then the next day we went, I think our first stop was Balance Rock. Yeah, we got up at, at you know, Early in the morning, we're out of the hotel by 7.30, we're into the park. Balanced Rock is one of those things where you get there, you walk around it real quick, looks nice, boom, 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 done. 
uh, very popular with tour buses because it's mostly sidewalk. We then went to, uh, with the windows section, oh, like the that. windows, um, turret arch, double arch, very popular place. You know, we probably got there at eight in the morning and the parking lot was almost full. Uh, I think we were fortunate to get a spot. But, you know, Stephanie liked it. I liked it. Uh, I think the key there is there was a trail that goes around off. the east side of the windows. It kind of goes around, you know, there are sidewalks to popular viewpoints, but you can take a trail around the windows. And once you get around the back side of the windows, I mean, we saw like four people, five yeah, people. Yeah, four or five people on the back side of the windows. And then on the parking lot side of the windows, there was hundreds. Yeah. So, um, you know, that was a nice, I don't know what it was, maybe a two mile trail thereabouts. And it was pretty level. flat, yeah. Very easy, very nice walk. Did that, hopped back in the car, and we went to Sand Dune Arch. Yes. And really small parking lot. We got the last spot there when we pulled in, which was, our timing was impeccable. There were several cars that kind of drove in right after us. And, you know, basically, if there's no parking spot, you got to keep going. You go somewhere else in the park. And that was the one where we met that couple and their sister. And yes. we, uh, hiked and so anytime I can find somebody to chat with on the trail because he's always like way ahead of me I love it and I actually like walk faster when I'm talking to people so he likes it too so we talked talk to those folks about um, our nomadic journey and they were like scoping out different uh, places to retire to and they were considering RV uh, travel so it was fun yeah. talking with them and they recommended um, a different trail later on we ran into him again yeah and we we uh, really enjoyed the uh, I think it was about a one mile trail over to Broken Arch because mm -hmm. it was across grasslands it was one of the few times we were not walking on uneven rock and in deep sand on this trip mm -hmm. so it was nice to kind of get out in like more of a meadow type atmosphere and uh, we really enjoyed that and uh, at that point it was approaching lunchtime um, each of these days we pack a picnic lunch and so we hopped in the car and we drove back to the end of the park at Devil's Garden hoped to get a, a picnic table when we got there again packed with cars tour buses we got a parking spot and decided yeah we don't need to be walking around looking for a picnic table there probably isn't one it's 1130 we just eat in the car so that's what we did so yeah. we had a lot of PB&J a lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches a lot of apples um, we finished lunch and then we walked back to Landscape Arch, which is another one of the very popular trails. A lot of people on it. A little bit hilly, but not much. Sidewalk or, you know, very hard packed gravel most of the way. It was very easy for the tour bus crowds to do. Very wide trail. There was some shade on it. So I would say of all the trails we did, that was the most crowded. And, uh, but it was nice. I mean, it was a couple miles in, a couple miles out. We saw several different arches. Um, you know, it was early afternoon, so it was a little bit warm, but not too hot when we visited. And uh, we liked it, I think. Yeah, I liked it. Mm -hmm. I would uh, say you should definitely go to arches and stop on all of the trails that we're mentioning, yeah. just because they're fairly easy. We didn't have trail legs at that point, and heck, I don't really ever have trail legs. I'm a slow hiker. Um, True. Very true. Like old people yeah. beat me. I, I would say, with the exception of going on some of the back roads and the off road trails that we couldn't get to in our car, we pretty much did everything at Arches. There were some hikes in Devil's Garden that went farther back into the park that we could have done, you know. But at this point, you know, it's probably three o'clock in the afternoon. We've been in the park since eight in the morning. We were a little bit tired. We've done a lot of hikes. And we had an hour drive home. We had an hour drive home. And, you know, quite honestly, Stephanie liked arches, but I was kind of at the point of looking around going, another arch, got it. I mean, you know, Stephanie earlier said, it's all rocks. Okay, I get that. I like the rocks. Um, arches, for me, is like another arch. Got it. Okay, I don't want to see any more arches. They're nice. They're cool. I get it. Delicate arch was awesome. The rest of them, glad we went, enjoyed it. have no plans to go back. I think that'll wrap up this video on our recap of Arches mm -hmm. and um, stay tuned check out our other videos um, in this series next up is Capitol Reef see you next week all right next week it is <laughs>